I-69, I-69, I-69. The next superhighway. Will it ever be finished? So last year we took a look at I-69, America's next and likely last great superhighway. Now many of you enjoyed that video for various reasons. It even inspired a very similar video from a much larger channel. But that's a conversation for another day. So here we are one year later and I've had the chance to get on the ground and travel to some of the areas that I-69 already exists in and see some of the places that it is supposed to exist in soon. And what I've come to learn is that some states are a lot more enthusiastic about building this highway than the others. So in this video we're going to explore why some of those states want I-69 so much more than the others and what they are doing to get it finished. And I'll also update you on what I saw on the ground while checking out I-69. So hit that like button, subscribe if you enjoyed the content, and let's talk about I-69 again. So first off, what is I-69? I-69 is a major north-south interstate highway planned to travel from the Canadian border in Michigan to the Mexican border at three different points in Texas. It has been nicknamed the NAFTA Superhighway, as it is to be a major transportation corridor for trade between the U.S. and its major trade partners, Mexico and Canada. Major metro areas along I-69 include Indianapolis, Indiana, Memphis, Tennessee, and Houston, Texas. It is partially completed in some areas, under construction in others, while some other areas haven't even had a final planned path for laid out as of yet. The originally planned portion of I-69 running between Port Huron, Michigan, and Indianapolis, Indiana was completed in 1992. However, the route's extension was added by the U.S. Congress between 1993 and 2000, bringing it to be the cross-country corridor that it has become today. I-69 is significant in that it is the last cross-country interstate corridor planned for the United States, as the original interstate highway system was deemed completed in the 1990s. I-69's construction has not been without controversy. The portion in southern Indiana between Evansville and Indianapolis was initially met with fierce resistance from environmental groups. However, these groups were eventually overruled, and I-69 has mostly been completed in that area. Then further south, poorer states such as Louisiana and Mississippi have criticized Congress for designating the corridor without providing funding for its construction, which does have some validity to it. The route is estimated to cost as much as $25 billion to complete. And it's not as if these states have a few spare billion just lying around. But as you can see from the thumbnail, the highlighted states are working hard, despite all this, to get I-69 built. They want it bad and have made it a priority to get it done. So we will go state by state and take a look at how I-69 is progressing in these states and where things stand as we head into 2024. We will start in the south with the banger, Big Texas, where they have not only I-69 proper, but three stems and two auxiliary routes. Leave it to Texas to have more I-69 than anyone else. In Texas, I-69 begins at the Mexican border in three locations. I-69W in Laredo, I-69C in FAR via US-281, and I-69E in Brownsville. These routes will travel northbound along the current US-59, US-281, and US-77 corridors, where they will converge near Victoria, Texas. From there, they all become one I-69 as it heads to Houston along the US-59 corridor. After Houston, I-69 is slated to continue along the current US-59 corridor up to Tanaha, where it will then enter Louisiana along the US-84 corridor, while a long three-digit auxiliary route known as I-369 will continue northbound along the US-59 corridor towards Texarkana. So what did I see when I was on I-69 in Texas? Well, in Laredo, if you're coming off I-35, you'll see signs for I-69W and the Royal Trade Bridge. Currently, this was the only part of I-69W that was signed. I did hop on the World Trade Bridge up until the last point before committing to crossing into Mexican customs. And let's just say it lives up to its name. Almost the entire highway was trucks and massive industrial areas surround the highway. World trade is happening here indeed. US-59 did continue briefly as a freeway east of I-35, 
but there is no I-69W signage here as of yet. And I didn't spot any construction either. Over in the Rio Grande Valley city of Far is I-69C. I did get to travel from the current northern end of the highway north of Edinburgh and have to say that it gets pretty rural up here. From there southbound to Far, you have a standard four lane roadway. The current interchange with I-2 at the terminus is a mess right now as Texas is in the process of constructing the final design. In order to reach the border and continue along US-281, Currently, one must utilize the frontage roads to bypass the current interchange with I-2. It appears that I-69C will end at I-2 and not directly access the border. I took I-2 eastbound over the seemingly endless number of little towns along the route, eventually into Brownsville. In Brownsville, I-69E was fully built out, fully signed, all the way down to the southern terminus near the border. What I did notice is that despite Google Maps labeling it as such, I-169 was in fact not signed, at least not from I-69E. Instead, it is shown as State Highway 550 and has not yet received the I-169 designation. Traveling northbound out of Brownsville, I-69E went all the way up past Raymondville before becoming US-77. I took US-77 north and while I-69E didn't make another appearance here, the area was pretty rural and various bypasses of the towns along the route were either completed or currently under construction. So it looks like I-69E will be the first section of the three-way split that Texas will finish. Around Victoria, there were future I-69 corridor signs posted up on US-59. So it is coming. Now, once you reach Houston, you get what is by far the largest metro area along the route and also its most developed portion. It is concurrent with US-59, which is what many Houstonians will tell you the highway is called. However, my Houston folks, it is now I-69. Resistance is futile so you better get used to the new name. The I-69 designation continues up to Cleveland and is under construction in various sections north of there. I didn't get to travel up the US-59 corridor in person yet, but the final part of the highway that I saw in Texas was in Texarkana. In Texarkana, you'll see I-369 signed and built out on the western bypass of the city up to I-30. So why does Texas want I-69 so bad? Well, first, Texas has never had a highway planned for the state that it didn't want. It might end up being the only state that builds the fabled Interstate 14 that we'll talk about on a later video. But in the case of I-69, Texas likely wants it for economic reasons and to a lesser degree for increased mobility. As the US pivots its manufacturing away from China and towards Mexico, Texas will be at the forefront of this new booming trade. I-35 is a heavy populated corridor that currently serves most NAFTA trade but I-69 will be traveling through much less populated territory, making it an excellent corridor for moving the massive amount of freight traffic that is coming to the state. This will also help alleviate some of the issues on I-35 and reserve more of its capacity for local travelers. I'm sure the folks in Austin will be thankful. Some East Texas towns could also see economic benefits as they are currently isolated from the interstate highway system and typically ignored by all those traveling through the state. I mean, when was the last time that anyone not from Texas ever visited Lufkin? With I-69, it might finally be put on the map. Now this next state is one of those that do not want I-69, or at least it's not really a priority for them. That is Louisiana. In Louisiana, I-69 is projected to enter the state from Texas along the US-84 corridor. It is then to travel near Shreveport, serving as a sort of outer southern bypass around the area before heading into Arkansas en route towards El Dorado. I-69 in Louisiana is unique in that it isn't following any existing corridor and is planned to be a completely new roadway where none existed before. Why doesn't Louisiana want I-69? Well, in Louisiana, it is a matter of priorities. I-69 is mostly a pass-through route in Louisiana and doesn't serve much of its population. The state is also more focused on completing the Interstate 49 corridor, which does serve the majority of its population centers. And finally, Louisiana has major maintenance issues with its existing roadways. I-23 Shreveport was in dire straits, pothole and broken pavement galore. And the big elephant in the room for Louisiana is I-10, with multiple outdated bridges in both Baton Rouge and Lake Charles, along with the coming end of useful life for much of this highway through the swamps and bayous of Louisiana. Louisiana could be facing a multi-billion dollar infrastructure nightmare with I-10, unless the federal government steps in. So I-69 is a distant fantasy for Louisiana. They might not ever get to experience it. You won't even find future I-69 corridor signs around the state, 
But to be fair, the state DOTD did perform a study stating the need for I-69, but you won't find it listed as a priority among state infrastructure projects. When you're broke, you just don't have time to think about I-69. The next state is one that is kind of in the middle. They kind of want I-69, and based on my earlier video about them, you can tell that they not only want I-69, but a lot of other things as well. That one is Arkansas. In Arkansas, I-69 is to travel through the southeastern part of the state, through some of the poorest, most forgotten parts of the entire country. I didn't have time to personally tour these areas due to how isolated and time-consuming it is to access them, which clearly demonstrates a need for I-69. But Arkansas does indeed want I-69 down here. They've even built out a temporary two-lane version of it around Monticello. So while Arkansas has roadway infrastructure ambitions that would rival neighboring Texas, it simply does not have those big Texas dollars to make its dreams come true. Arkansas mainly wants I-69 in this area for economic reasons. In modern America, if you're too far away from the interstate, then you're kind of left out of its economic prosperity. None of these southeastern Arkansas towns even has direct four-lane access to an interstate highway, the nearest one being almost an hour away in Pine Bluff. Arkansas City in particular is extremely remote. I really want to see this town, but getting down there and back is a very long commitment with few modern amenities nearby. So while I-69 certainly wouldn't guarantee that any economic activity would locate in the region, having an international corridor passing through is definitely a start. Another reason for I-69 in Arkansas is as a reliever route to I-40 and I-30, similar to I-35 in Texas. Currently, I-40 and I-30 are very heavy freight truck corridors in the state and it might be easier and more beneficial for the state as a whole to build I-69 than it would be to widen these existing corridors to handle the increased commercial activity here. Now this next state is one that I'd say does not want I-69, and that is Mississippi. In good old Mississippi, I-69 is to enter the state from around Arkansas City on a big shiny new bridge and hug the northwestern corner of the state as it heads towards Memphis. I did get to check out the existing I-69 that was built in the state. It's a nice, pleasant drive. Apparently, it was able to be built out thanks to the Tunica Resorts Casino in the area. Much of the corridor that I-69 is to follow through Mississippi is actually already at least a four-lane divided highway. So it's Mississippi Delta cities don't need I-69 as badly as the ones in Arkansas. The big issue for Mississippi is funding. And being the poorest state in the union, it simply does not have the cash flow for I-69. I mean, this state can barely afford to deliver basic services like clean water to its capital city, so it certainly can't afford I-69. The state also struggles maintaining its current roadways. I-29 through Jackson was one of the worst quality sections of interstate that I've ever driven on. Mississippi is simply not in position to even think about I-69 at this time. Our next state does want I-69, and they are putting in the work to get it done. That is Tennessee, the volunteer state. In Tennessee, I-69 travels due north through Memphis, concurrent with I-55, I-240, and then I-40, which makes it an easy completion in that area. When I traveled through Memphis in January, it appeared that Tennessee has opted to leave future signage along the highway rather than official I-69 shields at this time. What is signed in Memphis, however, is the outer loop, I-269, which it shares with the Memphis suburbs in Mississippi. A loop that I wouldn't mind seeing extended across the Mississippi River, as this area is in dire need of a third river crossing. After Memphis, it is to travel northbound along the US-51 corridor through cities such as Dyersburg and Union City before entering Kentucky around Fulton. There is a Union City bypass under construction and scheduled to be opening very soon. US-51 is a four-lane divided highway through the rest of Tennessee, so the state will have to likely build several bypasses to get I-69 done here. Why does Tennessee want I-69? For Tennessee, the reasons are likely economic as well. Tennessee is one of the states that has seen major population growth and economic prosperity thanks to Americans relocating from the Rust Belt and the Northeast. But in Northwest Tennessee, things are moving more slowly. I-69 shields rolling through that area can't open up these towns for potential industrial development thanks to reduced travel times to access the Memphis metro area. And next, there is Kentucky. Kentucky is an interesting one, as it probably had to do the least amount of work to get I-69 done, as the corridors that it uses were already controlled access freeways, thanks to the state's parkway system. In Kentucky, I-69 follows the Purchase Parkway from the Tennessee state line up to I-24. Between Mayfield and I-24, it is officially I-69, but the section of the Purchase Parkway from Mayfield to the Tennessee state line 
is still in the process of being upgraded to interstate standards. The concurrency with I-24 continues east until splitting off along the Western Kentucky Parkway. I-69 then hops onto the Penny Rile Parkway, where it heads up north towards Henderson. Currently, the highway ends just south of the Autobahn Parkway, where it is to continue in the future along the current US-41, before departing on a new alignment en route to a brand new Ohio River Bridge crossing. This area is currently under construction. There is also a spur route, I-169, that heads southbound on the Penny Route Parkway towards Hopkinsville, and eventually terminates at I-24 south of that city. It is also in the process of being upgraded to gain entry into the I-69 family. So why does Kentucky want I-69? Well, since Kentucky already had its parkway system that I-69 overlaps with, the motivation for this state appears to be the desire to get that blue shield and the power that comes with it. That blue shield and the standards that it requires just holds more economic weight than some random freeway. Kentucky also wants a new Ohio River Bridge to replace the current one carrying US-41, which we'll discuss in the next state. And after leaving Kentucky, we enter Indiana, a state that wants I-69 very badly and they are putting in a lot of work to get it done. In Indiana, I-69 is a route that one could say is the most important highway corridor in the entire state. It travels in a diagonal southwest to northeast direction in the state and hits all of its major population centers. It will enter the state with a new Ohio River Bridge crossing near Evansville and continue north towards Bloomington, home of the University of Indiana, and then to the state capital and largest city of Indianapolis. It will then hitch a ride on the I-465 Beltway, where it joins like 100 other highways as they all circle around the city. After Indianapolis, I-69 hits Fort Wayne and spawns a beltway known as I-469. I-69 north of Indianapolis and to the Michigan state line is complete. It is also complete between Evansville and Bloomington, but currently falls just short of actually reaching Indianapolis. Headed towards Indianapolis, I saw quite a bit of construction going on as they continue to upgrade the corridor and get the city prepared for I-69. If you travel through here, be prepared to wait. At the southern interchange with I-465, it took well over 15 minutes just to go a few miles. That northern interchange with I-465 and I-69 is also under construction, and you'll face some significant delays here as well. So why does Indiana want I-69 so bad? Well, let's start with Evansville. The current bridge that carries US-41 over the Ohio River between Evansville and Henderson, Kentucky is in bad shape. It is reaching the end of its useful life and hanging on by a thread to serve the traffic that still needs it for crossing the river. When I went over it, you can see the crews doing patchwork maintenance as they try to keep it operational for just a little longer. I-69 will bring a brand new shiny bridge crossing that is up to modern standards, safe and convenient for travelers to cross between two states. Then up in Indianapolis, the addition of I-69 will give it a whopping four two-digit interstate highways and a full beltway around the city. Indianapolis has never been accused of being too exciting nor interesting, but it will certainly be living up to its name as the crossroads of America with all these major roadways converging in the area. And finally, I-69 just connects all of Indiana's top population centers. Indianapolis, Fort Wayne, and Evansville are the largest cities in the state. And up until I-69, there was no fast connection between Evansville and Indianapolis. It's a pretty big deal from a logistical standpoint when your state's main highway is the future superhighway that will be moving so much commerce through North America. Indiana is in prime position to get some of this business. They even have a nifty I-69 website set up to track the progress of the highway, which they expect to have finished by the end of 2024. So with all the spots that is going to be hidden, I-69 might be more important to Indiana than to any other state. And lastly, there is Michigan. Here, I-69 runs from the state line with Indiana up to the capital of Lansing before turning towards Flint and headed to the Canadian border in Port Huron. In Michigan, I-69 is complete, and they have been enjoying I-69 for a while now, so there isn't much to say here. But a couple interesting notes are that in Lansing, there's a concurrency with the opposite interstate, Interstate 96. So here you can ride on I-69 and I-96 at the same time. Do with that information what you will. Also, the highway switches from a north-south designation to an east-west one after Lansing. A rare situation for an interstate highway. And there it is, guys, the states that want I-69 and those that don't. Do you live in any other states along this route? Have you ever been on and experienced I-69 yourself? Do you want to see I-69 completed? Let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one. Coming soon.
to a town near you.